Well, welcome to one of the additional Bible studies for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. We welcome everyone who is here with us today. And for those who will listen in later on the archives as well, we pray that this is a blessing to each and every one of you. Well, this is the Passion Translation that we're going to be reading from. And we are still in the Book of Psalms because that is the largest book in the Bible, in this Bible. And remember, the Passion Translation is the New Testament plus the Book of Psalms, Proverbs, and Song of Songs. So this week we're going to be reading from Psalms 101 to 125. So there's a lot of ground to cover because one of the longest chapters in the Bible is Psalm 119. So um, hopefully we can do this in, in just one part and not have to go to two parts, but we will, we will gauge that um, as we go. So before we get started, we're going to open with our opening prayer and then get, get right into reading. If there's something that I need to bring out um, as I'm reading, I will. Otherwise, we're not going to do recapping on these additional Bible studies. We do the recapping um, and summar summarization of, of the lesson on our main Bible study. Um, there is something that I will do um, probably next week as we're closing the book of Psalms. I'm going to go through and just give you uh, a list of, of, of the Psalms and who wrote each one. Um, so we'll, we'll actually do that as a little additional. Father God, we just want to thank you for the ability to gather together, to fellowship together, to study another version of your word. We love your word, Father God, and your word is such a treasure to us. We ask your Holy Spirit to come lead us, guide us, direct us, open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart that we are receptive to the holy word that we're hearing read to us today. And we just thank you for your guidance, Holy Spirit. It is always welcome here. Father God, we give you all of our praises and all honor and glory belong to you. We pray this prayer in the name above all names, the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Okay, Psalm 101. In this Bible, it is entitled Integrity, and it's David's poetic praise. Lord, I will sing about your faithful love for me. My song of praise will have your justice at its theme. I'm trying my best to walk in the way of integrity, especially in my own home, but I need your help. I'm wondering, Lord, when will you appear? I refuse to gaze on that which is vulgar. I despise what is evil and anything that moves my heart away from you. I will not let evil hold me in its grip. Every perverse and crooked way I have put away from my heart, for I will have nothing to do with the deeds of darkness. I will silence those who secretly want to slander my friends, and I will not tolerate the proud and arrogant. My innermost circle will only be those whom I know are pure and godly. They will be the only ones I allow to minister to me. There is no room in my home for hypo hypocrites, for I can't stand chronic liars who flatter and deceive. At each and every sunrise I will awake to do what's right and put to silence those who love wickedness bring God's people from their evil grip. I will do all of this because of my great love for you. Psalm 102, From Tears to Praise, a prayer for those who are overwhelmed and for all the discouraged who come to pour out their hearts before the Lord. Lord, listen to my prayer. Listen to my cry for help. You can't hide your face from me in the day of my distress. Stoop down to hear my prayer and answer me quickly, Lord. For my days of happiness have gone up in smoke. My body is raging with fever. My heart is set and I'm consumed by this illness, withered like a dead leaf. I can't even eat. And nothing but skin and bones, nothing left to me but whispered groans. I'm depressed, lonely, forgotten, and abandoned. I'm sleep sleepless, shivering in the cold, forlorn and friendless, like a lonely bird on the rooftop. My every enemy mocks and insults me incessantly. They even use my name as a curse to speak over others. Because of your great and furious anger against me, all I do is suffer with sorrow, with nothing to eat but a meal of mourning. My crying fills my cup with salty tears. In your wrath, you have rejected me, sweeping me away like dirt on the floor. My days are marked by, this, by the lengthening shadows of death. I'm withering away, and there's nothing left of me. 
But then I remember that you, O Lord, still sit enthroned as king over all. The fame of your name will be revealed to every generation. I know you're about to arise and show your tender love to Zion. Now is the time, Lord, for your compassion and mercy to be poured out. The appointed time has come for your prophetic promises to be fulfilled. For your servants weep in sympathy over Zion's ruins and feel love for her every stone. When you arise to intervene, all the nations and kings will be stunned and will fear your awesome name trembling before your glory. Yes, you will reveal yourself to Zion and appear in the brightness of your glory to restore her and give her children. He responds to the prayer of the poor and broken and will not despise the cry of the homeless. Write all this down for the coming generation so recreated people will read it and praise the Lord. Tell them how Yah looked down from his high and holy place, gazing from his glory to survey the earth. He listened to all the groaning of his people longing to be free, and he set loose the sons of death to experience life. Multitudes will stream to Jerusalem to praise the Lord and declare his name in Zion. People, peoples from every land, their kings and kingdoms, will gather together to worship the Lord. But God has brought me to my knees, shortening my life. So I cry out to you, my God, Father of eternity, please don't let me die. I know my life is not yet finished. With your hands, you once formed the foundations of the earth and handcrafted the heavens above. They will all fit, fade away one day, like worn-out clothing, ready to be discarded, but you'll still be here. You will replace it all. Your first creation will be changed, but you alone will endure the God of all eternity, generation after generation, our descendants will live securely, for you are the one protecting us, keeping us for yourself. And the famous Psalm 103 um, is entitled in the Passion Translation, Our Father's Love, King David's Song of Praise. With my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the Holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul celebration. How could I ever forget the miracle of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart with forgiveness in spite of all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I soar again like a flying eagle in the sky. You're a God who makes things right, giving justice to the defenseless. You unveiled to Moses your plans and showed Israel's sons what you should, what you could do. Lord, you're so kind and tender-hearted to those who don't deserve it, and so patient with people who fail you. Your love is like a flooding river, overflowing its banks with kindness. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so that you can hold a grudge against us. You may discipline us for our many sins but never as much as we really deserve, nor do you get even with us for what we've done. Higher than the highest heavens, that's how high your tender mercy ex extends. Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of your loyal love towering over all who fear you and bow down before you. Farther than from a sunrise to a sunset, that's how far you've removed our guilt from us. The same way a loving father feels towards his children, that's but a sample of your tender feelings towards us, your beloved children who live in awe of you. You know all about us inside and out. You are mindful that we're made from dust. Our days are so few, and our momentary beauty so swiftly fades away. Then all of a sudden we're gone, like grass clippings blown away in a gust of wind, taken away to our appointment with death, leaving nothing to show that we were here. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken and unrelenting towards those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe before you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise you've made passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. You are faithful to all those who follow your ways and keep your word. God's heavenly throne is eternal, secure, and strong, and his sovereignty rules the entire universe. So bless the Lord, all his messengers of power, for you are his mighty heroes, who listen intently to the voice of his word to do it. Bless and praise the Lord, you mighty warriors, ministers who serve him well and fulfill his desires. I will bless and praise the Lord with my whole heart. Let all his works throughout the earth, wherever his dominion stretches, let everything bless the Lord. Now that reads quite differently from what we're used to hearing Psalm 
uh, 103 start um, because we're so used to it starting bless the Lord oh my soul um, and uh, it doesn't in the passion translation it's a little bit different different um, wording so um, Psalm 104 our creators compassion everything I am will praise and bless the Lord O oh Lord my God your greatness takes my breath away overwhelming me by your majesty beauty and splendor you wrap yourself with a shimmering glistening light you wear sunshine like a garment of glory you stretch out the starry skies like a tapestry you build your balconies with light beams and ride as king in a chariot you made from clouds you fly upon the wings of the wind you make your messengers into winds of the spirit and all your ministers become flames of fire you our creator formed the earth and you hold it all together so it will never fall apart you pour the ocean ocean depths over the planet submerging mountains beneath yet at the sound of your thunder shout the waters all fled away filling the deep with seas the mountains rose and valleys sank to the levels you decreed for them then you set a boundary line for the sea and commanded them not to trespass you sent springs cascading through through the valleys flowing freely between the mountains and hills you provide drink for every living thing men and beasts have their thirst quenched because of you the bird builds nests near the tranquil streams chirping their joyous songs from the branches above from your kindness you send the rain to water the mountains from the upper rooms of your palace your goodness brings forth fruit for all to enjoy your compassion brings the earth harvest feeding the hungry you cause the grass to grow for livestock along with fruit grains and vegetables to feed mankind you provide sweet wine to gladden hearts you give us daily bread to sustain life giving us glowing health for our bodies the trees of the lord drink until they're satisfied lebanon's lofty trees stand tall right where you planted them within their branches you provide for birds a place to build their nests even herons find a home in the cypress trees you make the high mountains a home for wild goats and the rocky crag where the rock badgers burrow you made the moon to mark the months and the sun to measure the days you turn off the light and it becomes night and all the beasts of the forest come out to prowl the mighty lions roar for their dinner but it's you god who feeds them all at sunrise they slink back to their dens to crouch down in in the shadows then man goes out to his labor and toil working from dawn to dusk oh lord what an amazing variety of all you have created wild and wonderful is this world you have made while wisdom was there at your side this world is full of so many creatures, yet each belong to you. And then there is the sea, so vast, so wide and deep, swarming with countless forms of sea life, both small and great. Trading ships glide through the high seas. And look, there are massive whale whales bounding upon the waves. All the creatures wait expectantly for you to give them their food as you determine. You come near, and they all gather around, feasting from your open hands, and each is satisfied from your abundant supply. But if you were to withhold from them and turn away, they would all panic. And when you choose to take away their breath, each one dies and returns to dust. When you release your spirit, wind, life is created, ready to replenish life upon the earth. May God's glorious splendor endure forever. May the Lord take joy and pleasure in all that he has made. For the earth's over overseer has the power to make it tremble, just a touch of his finger, and volcanoes erupt. As the earth shakes and melts, I will sing my song to the Lord as long as I live. Every day I will sing my praises to God. May you be pleased with every sweet thought I have about you. For you are the source of my joy and gladness. Now let all the sinners be swept from the earth. But I will keep on praising you, my Lord, with all that is within me. My joyous, blissful sounds of hallelujah are all because of you. Now we read that psalm on Rosh Kadash. That's one of the psalms. That we read and we are going to come up um, very shortly on uh, what we call the Hallel and that's Psalm 113 to 118 so we read that also on um, holidays and and as well as Rosh Kadesh services Psalm 105 God's wonderful works go ahead and give God thanks for all the glorious things he has done go ahead and worship him tell everyone about his wonders let's sing his praises 
sing and put all his miracles to music. Shine and make your joyful boast in him. You lovers of God, let's be happy and keep rejoicing no matter what. Seek more of his strength. Seek more of him. Let's always be seeking the light of his face. Don't you ever forget his miracles and marvels. Hold to your heart every judgment he has decreed. For you are his servants, the true seed of Abraham. And you are the chosen ones, Jacob's sons. For he is the Lord our God, and his wise authority can be seen in all he does. For though a thousand generations may pass away, he is still true to his word. He has kept every promise he made to Abraham and to Isaac. His promises have become an everlasting covenant to Jacob as a decree to Jacob. He said to them, I will give you all the land of Canaan as your inheritance. They were very few in number when God gave them that promise, and they were all foreigners to that land. They were wandering from one land to another and from one kingdom to another. Yet God would not permit anyone to touch them, punishing even kings who came up against them. He said to them, Don't you dare lay a hand on my anointed ones, and don't do a thing to hurt my prophets. So God decreed a famine upon Canaan land, cutting off their food supply. But he had already sent a man ahead of his people to Egypt. It was Joseph who was sold as a slave. His feet were bruised by strong shackles, and his soul was held by iron. God's promise to Joseph purged his character until it was time for his dreams to come true. And interestingly enough, we had just read that in both the Tanakh Bible study study and our main Bible study, um, the story of Joseph. God's promise to Joseph purged his character until it was time for his dreams to come true. And and if you remember, his, his initial dreams were that uh, his brothers would bow down to him. Um, and that did come into fruition. Eventually, the king of Egypt sent for him, setting him free at last. Then Joseph was put in charge of everything. Under the king, he became the master of the palace over all the royal possessions. Pharaoh gave him authority over all the princes of the land, and Joseph became the teacher of wisdom to the king's advisors. Then Jacob, with all of Joseph's family, came from Canaan to Egypt and settled in Goshen. God made them very fruitful, and they multiplied incredibly until they were greater in number than those who ruled them. God turned their hearts to hate his people and to deal treacherously with his servants, but he sent them his faithful servant Moses, the deliverer, and chose Aaron to accompany him. Their command brought down signs and wonders, working miracles in Egypt. By God's di- direction, they spoke and released a plague of thick darkness over the land. God turned their rivers to blood, causing every fish to die, and the judgment plague of frogs came in enormous numbers, swarming everywhere, even into Pharaoh's bedroom. God spoke it, and another plague was released. Massive swarms of flies, vast clouds of insects covered the land. God rained down hail and flaming fire upon Egypt. Their gardens and vines were all destroyed, shattering trees into splinters throughout the territory. God spoke into varying hordes of locusts swept over the land, picking the ground clean of vegetation and crops. Then God struck down their firstborn sons, the pride and joy of every Egyptian family. At last, God freed all the Hebrews from their slavery and sent them away, laden with the silver and gold of Egypt. And not even one was feeble on their way out. Egypt was relieved at their exodus, ready to see them go, for the terror of the Lord of the Hebrews had fallen upon them. Sorry, I looked like it stopped recording there for a minute. <clears throat> and I'm losing my voice here for a minute. So I also paused to, to take a sip of water. Um, God spread out as a, cl- a cloud of as shade as they moved ahead and a cloud of fire to light up their night. Moses prayed and God brought them quail to eat. He satisfied them with heaven's bread falling from the sky. He broke open the, sh- the, the boulder and the waters poured out like a river in the desert. For God could never forget his holy promises to his servant Abraham. So God brought out his chosen ones with singing. With a joyful shout, they were set free. He gave them lands and nations just like he promised. Fruitful lands of crops they had never planted were now theirs. All this was done for them so that they would be faithful to keep the ways of God, obeying his laws and following his truths. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Next, we move to Psalm 106. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everyone. Thank God for he is good and easy to please. 
Your tender love for us, Lord, continues on forever. Who could ever fully describe your glorious miracles? Yahweh, who, who could ever praise you enough? The happiest one on earth is the one who keeps your word and clings to righteousness every moment. So remember me, Lord, as you take joy in your people. And when you come to bring the blessings of salvation, don't forget me. Let me share in the wealth and beauty of all your lovers. Rejoice with your nation in all their joys. And let me share in the glory you give to your chosen ones. We've all sinned so much, just like our fathers. Guilty is written over our lives. Our fathers who were delivered from Egypt didn't fully understand your wonders, and they took you for granted. Over and over you showed them such tender love and mercy, yet they were barely beyond the Red Sea when they rebelled against you. Nonetheless, you saved them more once, more than once, and so they would know how powerful you are, showing them the honor of your name. You roared over the waters of the Red Sea, making a dry path for your people to cross through. You freed them from the strong power of those who oppressed them and rescued them from bondage. Then the waters rushed over their enemies and drowned them all. Not one survived. Seeing this, the people believed your words, and they all broke out with songs of praise. Yet how quickly they forgot your miracles of power. They wouldn't wait for you to act when they were hungry, but demanded you satisfy their cravings and give them food. They tested you to the breaking point, so you gave them what they wanted to eat, but their souls starved away to nothing. They became envious of Moses and Aaron, your holy ones. You split up in the earth and it swallowed up Dathan and Abiram, along with their followers. Fire fell from heaven and burnt up all the, the band of rebels, turning them to ashes. They made a, an idol of, calf, of a calf at Sinai and bowed to worship their man-made statue. They preferred the image of a grass-eating ox to the presence of the glory-filled God. They totally forgot it was you who saved them by the wonders and awesome miracles you worked in Egypt. So you were fed up and decided to destroy them. But Moses, your chosen leader, stood in the gap between you and the people and made intercession on their behalf to turn away your wrath from killing them all. Yet they still didn't believe your words and they despised the land of delight you gave to them. They grumbled and find fault with everything and closed their hearts to your voice. So you gave up and swore to them that they would all die in the desert. And he scattered their children to distant lands to die as exiles. Then our fathers joined the worshippers of the false god named Lord of the Pit. They even ate the sacrifices offered to the dead. All they did made you burn with anger. It made you so angry that a plague broke out among them. It continued until Phineas intervened and executed the guilty for causing judgment to fall upon them. Because of this deed of righteousness, Phineas will be remembered forever. Your people also provoked you to wrath at the stream called Strife. This is where Moses got into serious trouble. Because the people were rebellious against you, Moses exploded in anger and spoke to them out of his bitterness. Neither did our fathers destroy the enemies in the land as you had commanded them, but they mingled themselves with their enemies and learned to, co to copy their works of darkness. They began to serve their gods and bow before their idols. All of this led them away from you and brought about their downfall. They even sacrificed their little children to, de to the demon spirits, shedding the innocent blood of their sons and daughters. These dark practices greatly defiled the land and their own souls through the murder and bloodshed of their own babies. Their sins made them spiritual adulterers before you. This is why you were furious, as your anger burned hot against them. You couldn't even stand to look at your very own people any longer. So you turned them over to the crushing hands of other nations and those who hated them became tyrants over them. Oppressive enemies subdued them, ruling over them with their tyranny. Many times you would have come to rescue them, but they continued in their rebellious ways, choosing to ignore your warnings. Then they sank lower and lower, destroyed by their depravity. Yet even so you waited and waited, watching to see if they would turn and cry out to you for a father's help. And then... When you heard their cry, you relented, and you remembered your covenant, and you turned your heart toward them again, according to your abundant, overflowing, and limitless love. Then you caused even their oppressors to pity them and show them compassion. Do it again, Lord. Save us, O Lord our God. Gather us from our exile and unite us together, so that we will give our great and joyous thanks to you again, and bring you glory by our praises. Blessed be our Lord God forever and ever. 
and let everyone everywhere say hallelujah. Amen. Faithful is our king. Now, we're going to now begin the final book of, of, of Psalms, book five. And this is known in, in the Passion Translation as the Deuteronomy Psalms, Psalms of Praise and the Word. This begins with Psalm 107. Psalm 107, God's constant love. Let everyone give all their praise and thanks to the Lord. Here's why he is better than anyone could ever imagine. He, he is better than anyone could ever imagine, yet he's always loving and kind, and his faithful love never ends. So go ahead, let everyone know it. Tell the world how he broke through and delivered you from the power of darkness and has gathered us together from all over the world. Well, that's true with, with even, you know, with, with us, with what Yeshua did for us, for the entire world. He has set us free to be his very own. Some of us once wandered in the wilderness like desert nomads with no true direction or dwelling place. Starving, thirsty, staggering, we became desperate and filled with despair. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. He led us right into a place of safety and abundance a suitable city to dwell in. So lift your hands and thank God for his marvelous kindness and for all his miracles and mercy for those he loves. How he satisfies the souls of thirsty ones and fills the hungry with all that is good. Some of us once sat in darkness, living in the dark shadows of death. We were prisoners to our pain, chained to our regrets, for we rebelled against God's word and rejected the wise counsel of God's most high. So he humbled us through our circumstances, watching us as we stumbled with no one there to pick us back up. Our own pain became our punishment. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us. And he did. His light broke through the darkness and he led us out in freedom from death's dark shadow and snapped every one of our chains. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles and mercy. For those he loves, for he smashed through every, through heavy prison doors and shattered the steel bars that that held us back, just to set us free. Some of us, some of us were such fools, bringing on ourselves sorrow and suffering, all because of our sins. Sick and feeble, unable to stand the sight of food, we drew near to the gates of death. Then we cried out, "Lord, help us, rescue us!" And He did. God spoke the words, "Be healed," and we were healed delivered from death's door. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles of mercy for those he loves. Bring your praise as an offering and your thanks as a sacrifice as you sing your story of miracles with a joyful song. Some of us set sail upon the sea to faraway ports, transporting our goods from ship to shore. We were witnesses of God's power. Out in the ocean deep, we saw breathtaking wonders. Upon the high seas, when God spoke, he stirred up a storm, lifting high the waves with hurricane winds. Ships were tossed by swelling sea, rising to the sky, then dropping down to the depths, reeling like drunkards, spinning like tops, everyone at their wit's end, until even sailors despaired of life, cringing in terror. Then we cried out, Lord, help us, rescue us, and he did. God stilled the storm, calmed the waves, and he hushed the hurricane winds to only a whisper. We were so relieved, so glad, as he guided us safe, safely to harbor in a quiet haven. So lift your hands and give thanks to God for his marvelous kindness and for his miracles of mercy for He loves the, for those he loves. Let's exalt him on high and lift up our praises in public. Let all the people and the leaders of the nation know how great and wonderful is Yahweh, our God. Whenever he chooses, he can dry up a river and turn the land into a desert, or he can take a fruitful land and make it even a saltwater swamp, all because of the wickedness of those who dwell there. But he also can turn a barren wilderness into an oasis with water. He can make springs flow into desert lands and turn them into fertile valleys so that cities spring up, and he gives it all to those who are hungry. They can plant their fields, fields and vineyards there and reap a bumper crop and gather a fruitful harvest. God will bless them and cause them to multiply and prosper, but others will become poor, humble because of their oppression, tyranny, and sorrow. For God pours contempt upon their arrogant abuse of power, helping scorn upon their princes, and makes them wander among ruins. 
but he raises up the poor and lowly with his favor giving them a safe place to live where no one can touch them god will grant them a large family and bless them the lovers of god will rejoice when they see this good men are glad when the evil ones are silenced if you are truly wise you'll learn from what i've told you it's time for you to consider these profound lessons of god's great love and mercy psalm 108 a prayer for god's help a poetic psalm by king david my heart of god is quiet and confident all because of you now i can sing my song with passionate praises awake O my soul with the music of his splendor arise my soul and sing his praises i will awaken the dawn with my worship greeting the daybreak with my songs of light wherever i go i will thank you all the nations will hear my praise songs to you your love is so extravagant it reaches higher than the heavens your faithfulness is so astonishing it stretches to the skies lord god be exalted as you soar throughout the heavens may your shining glory be seen high above all the earth come to your beloved ones and gently draw us out answer our prayer for your saving help come with your might and strength for we need you lord then i heard the lord speak in his holy splendor and from his sanctuary i heard the lord promise in my triumph, I will be the one to measure out the portion of my inheritance to my people, and I will secure the land as I promised you. Shechem, Sukkoth, Gilead, Manasseh, they are all still mine, he says. Judah will continue to produce kings and lawgivers, and Ephraim will produce great warriors. Moab will become my lowly servant. Edom will likewise serve my purposes. I will lift up a shout of victory over the land of, the, of Philistia. But who will bring my triumph into Edom's fortresses? Lord, have you really rejected us, refusing to fight our battles? Give us a father's help when we face our enemies, for to trust in any man is an empty hope. With God's help, we will prevail with might and power, and with God's help, we'll trample down our every foe. Psalm 109, God, it's time for vengeance. To the pure and shining one, a poetic song by King David. God of all my praise, don't stand silently by, by aloof to my pain. While the wicked slander me with their lies. Even right in front of my face, they lie through their teeth. I've done nothing to them, but they still surround me with their venomous words of hatred and vitriol. Though I love them, they stand accusing me like Satan for what I've never done. I will pray until I become prayer itself. They continually repay me with evil when I show them good. They give me hatred when I show them love. Show him how it feels. Let accusing liars be raised up against him, like Satan himself standing right next to him, and let him be declared guilty by a wicked judge. May even his prayers be seen as sinful. Shorten his life and let another replace him. This is David's cry out to God, to his enemies, how he wanted, he wanted God to deal with them. Make his wife a widow and his children orphans. Let them wander as beggars in the street, like homeless vagabonds evicted from their ruins. Let the creditors seize his entire estate and strangers like vultures take all that's left. Let no one be kind to him by, by showing pity to his fatherless children. May all his posterity die with him. Cut down his family tree and may all the sins of his ancestors be recorded, remembered before you forever. Cut off every he cut off even the memory of his family from the face of the earth because he never once showed love or kindness to others but persecuted the poor the broken-hearted and afflicted ones even putting them to death since he enjoyed cursing them may all his curses now come raining back on him until it all overwhelms him with misfortune since he refused to bless others god withhold every single blessing from him bitterness such vile vindictiveness was upon everything he did cursing was his lifestyle so smother him now with his own curses as his just reward um the this this will the lord's punishment upon him and all my lying accusers who speak evil against me but now oh yahweh god make yourself real to me like you promised me you would because of your constant love and your heart melting kindness come be my hero and deliver me I'm so broken, needy, and hurting. My heart is pierced through, and I'm so wound, wounded. I'm slipping down a dark slope, shaken to the core and helpless. All my fasting has left me so weak I can hardly stand. Now I'm shriveled up, nothing but skin and bones. 
I'm the example of failure and shame to all who see me. They just walk by me, shaking their heads. You have to help me, O oh Lord God. My true hero, come to my rescue and save me, for you are, my, you are loving and kind. Then everyone will know that you have won my victory, and they will all say to the Lord, You have finished it. So let them curse me if they want, but I know you will bless me. All their efforts will to destroy me will fail, but I will succeed and be glad. So let my, my Satan-like accusers fail. Make them look ridiculous if they try to come against me. Clothe them with a robe of guilty shame from this day on. But I will give my thanks to you over and over, and everyone will hear my lavish praises. For you stand right next to the broken ones as their saving hero to rescue them from all their accusers. So that's an interesting, um, an interesting psalm when David was quite desperate and crying out for God to, um, to vindicate him um, and to save him, and also deal with deal with those that were were trying to harm him. Psalm one ten, Messiah, King and Priest. King David's psalm. Yahweh said to my Lord, the Messiah. Sit with me as enthroned as an as enthroned ruler while I subdue your every enemy. They will bow low before you as I make them a footstool for your feet. Messiah, I know God himself with, will establish your kingdom as you reign in Zion glory. For he says to you, rule in the midst of your enemies. Your people will be your love offerings like living sacrifices spilled out before you. In the day of your mighty power, you will be exalted. And in the brightness of your holy ones, you will shine as an army shining from the womb of the dawn, anointed with the dew of your youth. Yahweh has taken a solemn oath and will never back away from it, saying, You are a priest for eternity, my king of righteousness. The Lord stands in full authority to shatter to pieces the kings who stand against you. On the day he displays his terrible wrath, he will judge every rebellious nation, filling their battlefield with corpses and it will shatter the strongholds of ruling powers. Yet he himself will drink from his inheritance as from a flowing brook. Refreshed by love, he will stand victorious. And this psalm is applied to, to Yeshua in the New Testament, where it's quoted more often than any other Old Testament passage, actually. So um, that is Psalm 110, Messiah, King and Priest. And we know the only Messiah is Yeshua. Psalm 111, celebrate God's greatness. Shout hallelujah to Yahweh. May every one of his lovers hear my passionate praise to him. For God's mighty miracles around me, his wonders are so delightfully mysterious that they leave all who seek them astonished. Everything he does is full of splendor and beauty. Each miracle demonstrates his eternal perfection. His unforgettable works of surpassing wonder reveal his grace and tender mercy. He satisfies all who love and trust him, and he keeps every promise he makes. Yes, this is the God we serve. Amen. And he reveals mighty, mighty power and marvels to his people by handing them nations as a gift. All God accomplishes is flawless, faithful, and fair, and his every word proves trustworthy and true. They are steadfast forever and ever, formed from truth and righteousness. His forever love paid a full ransom for his people, so that now we're free to come before Jehovah to worship his holy and awesome name. Where can wisdom be found? It is born in the fear of God. Everyone who, who follows his ways will never lack his living understanding, and the adoration of God will abide throughout eternity. Psalm 112. And yes, I, I thought that was loving understanding, but it, it actually reads in here, his living understanding. It was a little different. Psalm 112, the triumph of faith. Shout in celebration of praise to the Lord. Everyone who loves the Lord and delights in him will cherish his words and be blessed beyond expectation. Their descendants will be prosperous and influential. Every generation of his godly lovers will experience his favor. Great blessing and wealth fill fills the house of the wise for their integrity endures forever. Even if darkness overtakes them, sunrise brilliance will come bursting through because they are gracious to others so tender and true. Life is good for the one who is generous and charitable. 
conducting affairs with honesty and truth, their circumstances will never shake them and others will never forget their example. They will not live in fear or dread of what may come for their hearts are firm, ever secure in their faith. Steady and strong, they will not be afraid, but will calamity face their every foe until they all go down in defeat. Never stingy and always generous to those in need, their lives of influence and honor will never be forgotten, for they were full of good deeds. But the wicked take one look at a life lived like this, and they grit their teeth in anger, not understanding their bliss. The wicked slink away, speechless in the dark that darkness that falls where hope dies and all their dreams fade away to nothing nothing at all so now we're beginning with psalm 113 so again 1 113 and 118 is what we call the hallel so this may read different than what we're used to reading because again this is a different different version and it's it's you know with the passion translation i don't know how these are going to sound um psalm 113 god is kind Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. All you loving servants of God. Keep it up. Praise him some more. For the glorious name of the Lord is blessed forever and ever. From sunrise brilliance to sunset beauty. Well, that's, there's some similarity there. Uh, lift up his praise from dawn to dusk. For he rules on high over the nations with a glory that outshines even the heavens. No one can be compared to God enthroned on high. He stoops down to look upon the sky and the earth. He promotes the poor, picking them up from the dirt, and rescues the needy from the garbage dump. He turns paupers into princes and seats them on the royal thrones of honor. God's grace provides for the barren one a joyful home with children, so that even children, so that even childless couples find a family. He makes them happy parents, surrounded by their pride and joy. That's the God we praise. So give it all to him. Psalm 114, a song for Passover. Many years ago, the Jewish people escaped Egypt's ty tyranny so that Israel, God's people of praise, would become his holy sanctuary, his kingdom on the earth. The Red Sea waters saw them coming and ran the other way. Then later, the Jordan River, too, moved aside so that they could all pass through. The land shuddered with fear. Mountains and hills shook with dread. Oh, see what happened to you to make you flee. Oh, Jordan. Why was it that, what was it that made you turn and run? O oh, mountains, what frightened you so? And you hills, what made you quiver? Tremble, O oh, earth, for you are in the presence of the Lord, the God of Jacob. He splits open boulders and brings up bubbling water. Gushing streams burst forth when he is near. Psalm 115, the one true God. God, glorify your name. Yes, your name alone be glorified, not ours. For you are the one who loves us passionately, and you are faithful and true. Why should the unbelievers mock us, saying, Where is this God of yours? But we know our God rules from the heavens, and he takes delight in all that he does. The unbelievers worship what they make, their wealth and their work. They idolize what they own and what they make with their hands, but their things can't talk to them or answer their prayers. Their possessions will never satisfy. How true that is, even to today. Absolutely. Their futile faith in dead idols and dead works can never bring life or meaning to their souls. Blind men can only create blind things. Those deaf to God can only make a deaf image. Dead men can only create dead idols. Idols, And everyone who trusts in these powerless dead things will be just like what they worship, powerless and dead. So trust in the Lord, all his people, for he is the only true hero, the wraparound God who is our shield. You, his priest, trust in the Lord, for he is the only true hero. God wrapped around us as our shield. Yes, all his lovers who bow before him trust in the Lord, for he is our only true hero. God wrapped around us as our shield. The Lord will never forget us in our need. He will bless us indeed. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron, his priest. Yes, he will bless his lovers who bow before him, no matter who they are. God himself will fill you with more. Blessings upon blessings will be heaped upon you and upon your children from the maker of heaven and earth, the very God who made you. The heavens belong to our God. They are his alone, but he has given us the earth and put us in charge. Dead people cannot praise the Lord, but we can. 
Those who seek to the silence of the grave can no longer give glory to God, but we can. So let's praise the Lord. Let's begin now and let it go on until eternity is done. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Psalm 116, I'm saved. I am passionately in love with God because he listens to me. He hears my prayers and answers them. As long as I live, I'll keep praying to him, for he stoops down to listen to my heart's cry. Death once stared me in the face, and I was close to slipping into its dark shadows. I was terrified and overcome with sorrow. I cried out to the Lord, God, come and save me. He was so kind, so gracious to me because of his passion toward me. He made everything right, and he restored me. So I've learned from my experience that God protects the childlike and humble ones. For I was broken and brought low, but he answered me and came to my rescue. Now I can say to myself and to all, relax and rest, be confident and serene. For the Lord rewards fully those who simply trust in him. God has rescued my soul from death's fear and dried my eyes of many tears. He's kept my feet firmly on his path and strengthened me so that, that I may please him and live my life before him in his life-giving light. Even when it seems I'm surrounded by many liars and my own fears, and though I'm hurting in my suffering and trauma, I still stay faithful. I still stay faithful to God and speak words of faith. So now what can I ever give back to God to repay him for the blessings he's poured out on me? I will lift up the cup of his of salvation and praise him extravagantly for all that he's done for me. I will fulfill the promise I made to God in the presence of his gathered people. When one of God's holy lovers dies, it is costly to the Lord, touching his heart. Lord, because I am your loving servant, you have broken open my life and freed me from my chains. Now I'll worship you passionately and bring to you my sacrifice of praise, drenched with thanksgiving. I'll keep my promise to you, God, in the presence of your gathered people, just like I said I would. I will worship you here in your living presence in the temple in Jerusalem. I will worship and sing hallelujah. For I praise you, Lord. Psalm 117, glorious praise, a praise psalm. Let everyone everywhere, everywhere shine with praise to Yahweh. Let it all out. Go ahead and praise him, for he has conquered us with his great love, and his kindness has melted our hearts. His faithfulness lasts forever, and he will never fail you. So go ahead, let it all out. Praise Yah, O oh, Yah. And then um, Psalm 118, glorious thanksgiving, a praise psalm. Keep on giving your thanks to God, for he is good. He is so good. His constant tender love lasts forever. Let all his princely people sing, his constant tender love lasts forever. Let all his holy priests sing, his constant tender love lasts forever. Let all his lovers who bow low before him sing, his constant tender love lasts forever. Out of my deep, deep anguish I, and pain I prayed. And God, you heard me as a father. You came to my rescue and broke open the way into a beautiful and broad place. Now I know, Lord, that you are for me, and I will never fear what man can do to me, for you stand beside me as my hero who rescues me. I've seen with my own eyes the defeat of my enemies. I've triumphed over them all. Lord, it is so much better to trust in you to save me than to put my confidence in someone else. Yes, it is so much better to trust in the Lord to save me than to put my confidence in celebrities. Once I was hemmed in and surrounded by those who don't love you, but by Yahweh's supernatural power, I overcame, <laughs> I overcame them all. Yes, they surrounded me like a swarm of killer bees swirling around me. I was trapped like one trapped by a raging fire. I was surrounded with no way out and at the point of collapse. But by Yahweh's supernatural power, I overcame them all. They pushed me right up to the to the edge, and I was ready to fall, but you helped me to triumph, and together we overcame them all. Lord, you are my true strength, and my glory song, my champion, my savior. The joyful songs I now sing will be sung again in the hearts and homes of all your lovers. My loud shouts of victory will echo throughout the land, for Yahweh's right hand conquers valiantly. The right hand of Yahweh exalts. The right hand of Yahweh will never fail. You will not let them kill me, but I will live to tell the whole world what the Lord has done for me. Yes, the Lord punished me as I deserve, but he'll never give me over to death. Swing wide your gates of righteousness and let me pass through, and I will enter into your presence to worship only you. 
I found the gateway to God, the pathway to his presence for all his lovers. I will offer all my loving praise to you, and I thank you so much for answering my prayer and bringing me salvation. The very stone the Masons rejected as flawed has turned out to be the most important capstone of the arch holding up the very house of God. The Lord himself is the one who has done this, and it's so amazing, so marvelous to see. This is the very day of the Lord that brings gladness and joy, filling our hearts with glee. Oh God, please come and save us again. Bring us your breakthrough victory. Blessed is the one who comes to us, the sent one of the Lord. Now that's the Yeshua, as we know. Absolutely. And from within the temple we cry, we bless you. For the Lord our God has brought us his glory light. I offer him my life in joyous sacrifice. Tied tightly to your altar, I will bring you praise. For you are the God of my life, and I lift you high, exalting you to the highest place. So let's keep on giving our thanks to God, for he is so good. His constant tender love lasts forever. And Psalm 119, like I said, this is this is the longest chapter, uh, actually, in, in all Bibles. Um, so we're going to begin that. And this is entitled The Words of God. And it's broken up into little sub uh, there's little subtitles here. Uh, there's little sections it's broken up into, just like the other Bibles. And actually, other Bibles, um, it's it's broken up using the Hebrew alphabet. Now, this this psalm is generally an acrostic poem, a mathematical masterpiece consisting of 22 stanzas of eight lines each. And generally, in 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 other Bibles, um, each stanza begins with the same Hebrew letter at the beginning of every one of its eight lines, going in succession um, by by strophes from Aleph, the first letter of the of the Hebrew alphabet, at the first letter of each line, and the first strophe to Ta, that's T A W, um, the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So. It's, this is going to probably read a little bit differently because it's not set up that way. Um, but we're going to continue now with Psalm 119. The way to happiness. You're only truly happy when you walk in total integrity, walking in the light of God's word. What joy overwhelms everyone who keeps the ways of God, those who seek him as their heart's passion. They'll never do what's wrong, but will always choose the path of the Lord. God has prescribed the right way to live, obeying his laws with all our hearts. How I long for my life to bring you glory as I follow each and every one of your holy precepts. Then I'll never be ashamed, for I take strength from all your commandments. I will give my thanks to you from a heart of love and truth. And every time I learn more of your righteous judgments, I will be faithful to all that your word reveals. So don't ever give up on me. True joy. How can a young man stay pure? Only by living in the word of God and walking in its truth. I have longed for you with the passion of my heart. Don't let me stray from your directions. I consider your prophecies to be my greatest treasure, and I memorize them and write them on my heart to keep me from committing sins, tre sins treason against you. My wonderful God, you are to be praised above all. Teach me the power of your decrees. I speak continually of your laws as I recite out loud your counsel to me. I find more joy in following what you tell me to do than in chasing after all the wealth of the world. I set my heart on your precepts and pay close attention to all your ways. My delight is found in all your laws, and I won't forget to walk in your words. The next one is the abundant life. Let me, serve, let me your servant, walk in abundance of life, that I may always live to obey your truth. Open my eyes to see the miracle of wonders hidden in your word. My life on earth is so brief, so tutor me in the ways of your wisdom. I am continually consumed by these irresistible longings, these cravings to obey your every commandment. Your displeasure rests with those who are arrogant, who think they know everything. You rebuke the rebellious who refuse your laws. Don't let them mock and scorn me for obeying you. For even if the princes and my leaders choose to criticize me, I will continue to serve you and walk in your plans for my life. Your commandments are my counselors. Your word is my light and delight. Revived by the word. Lord, I'm fading away. I'm discouraged and lying in the dust. Revive me by your word, just like you promised you would. 
I've poured out my life before you, and you've always been there for me. So now I ask, teach me more of your holy decrees. Open up my understanding to the ways of your wisdom, and I will meditate deeply on your splendor and your wonders. My life's strength melts away with grief and sadness. Come, strengthen me, and encourage me with your words. Keep me far away from what is false. Give me grace to stay true to your laws. I have chosen to obey your truth and walk in the splendor light of all that you teach me. Lord, don't allow me to make a mess of my life, for I cling to your commands and follow them as closely as I can. I will run after you with my with delight in my heart, for you will make me obedient to your instructions. Understanding God's ways. Give me revelation about the meaning of your ways so I can enjoy the reward of following them fully. Give me an understanding heart so that I can passionately know and obey your truth. Guide me in, into the paths that please you, for I take delight in all that you say. Cause my heart to bow before your words of wisdom and not to the wealth of this world. Help me turn my eyes away from illusions so that I pursue only that which is true. Drench my soul with life as I walk in your paths. Reassure me of your promises, for I am your beloved, your servant who bows before you. Defend me from the criticism I face for keeping your beautiful words. See how I long with cravings for more of your ways. Let your righteousness revive my spirit. Trust in the Lord. May your tender love overwhelm me, O Lord, for you are my Savior and you keep your promises. I've always ha- I, I'll always have an answer for those who mock me because I trust in your word. May I never forget your truth, for I rely upon your precepts. I will obey your laws every moment of the day and will never forget the words you say. I will walk with you in complete freedom, for I seek to follow your every command. When I stand before kings, I will tell them the truth, and I will never be ashamed. My passion and delight is in your word, for I love what you say to me. I long for more revelation of your truth, for I love the light of your word as I meditate on your decrees. And the next one is my comfort. Lord, never forget the promises you've made to me, for they are my hope and my confidence. In all of my affliction, I find great comfort in your promises, for they have kept me alive. No matter how bitterly the, the proud mockers speak against me, I refuse to budge from your precepts. Your revelation, light, is eternal. I'm encouraged every time I think about your truth. Whenever I see the wicked breaking your laws, I feel horrible. As I journey through life, I put all your statutes to music. They become the theme of my joyous songs. Throughout the night, I think of you, dear God. I treasure you, your every word to me. All this joy is mine as I follow your ways. My heart is devoted to you. You are my satisfaction, Lord, and all that I need. So I'm determined to do everything you say. With all my life, I seek your favor. Pour out your grace on me as you promised. When I realize that I'm going astray, I turn back to obey your instructions. I give my all to following your revelation light. I will not delay to obey. Even when temptation encircles me with evil, I won't forget for a moment to follow your commands. In the middle of the night, I awake to give thanks to you because of all your revelation light so right and true. Anyone who loves you and bows in obedience to your words will be my friend. Give me more revelation of your ways, for I see your love and tender care everywhere. My true treasure, your extravagant kindness to me, makes me want to follow your words even more. Teach me how to make good decisions. And give me revelation light, for I believe in your commands. Before I was humbled, I used to always wander astray, but now I see the wisdom of your words. Everything you do is beautiful, flowing from your goodness. Teach me the power of your wonderful words. Proud boasters make up lies about me because I am passionate to follow all that you say. Their hearts are dull and void of feelings, but I find my true treasure in your truth. The punishment you brought me through through was the best thing that could have happened to me, for it taught me your ways. The words you speak to me are worth more than all the riches and wealth in the whole world. Growth through the word is the next uh, segment. Your very hands have held me and made me who I am. Give me more revelation light so that I may learn to please you more. May all your lovers see how you treat me and be glad, for your words are are entwined within my heart. Lord, I know that your judgments are always right. Even when it's me you judge, you're still faithful and true. Send your 
your kind mercy kiss to comfort me, your servant, just like you promised you would. Love me tenderly so I can go on, for I delight in your life-giving truth. Shame upon the proud liars. See how they oppress me, all because of my passion for your precepts. May all your lovers follow me as I follow the path of your instruction. Make me passionate and wholehearted to fulfill your every wish, so that I'll never have to be ashamed of myself. Deliver, deliver me. I'm lovesick with yearnings for more of your salvation, for my heart is entwined with your word. I'm consumed with longings for your promises, so I ask, when will they all come true? My soul feels dry and shriveled, useless and forgotten, but I will never forget your living truth. How much longer must I wait until you punish my persecutors? For I am your loving servant. Arrogant men who hate your truth and never obey your laws have laid a trap for my life. They don't know that everything you say is true, so they harass me with their lies. Help me, Lord, they've nearly destroyed my life, but I refuse to yield. I still live according to your word. Revive me with your tender love. Spare my life by your kindness, and I will continue to obey you. Faith in the word of God. Standing firm in the heavens, I, I fasten to eternity is the word. I'm sorry. Standing firm in the heavens and fastened to eternity is the word of God. Your faithfulness flows from one generation to the next. All that you created sits firmly in place to testify of you. By your decree, everything stands at attention, for all that you have made serves you. Because your words are my deepest delight, I didn't give up when all else was lost. I can never forget the profound revelations you've taught me, for they have kept me alive more than once. Lord, I'm all yours, and you are my Savior. I have sought to live my life pleasing to you. Even though evil men wait in ambush to kill me, I will set my heart before you to understand more of your ways. I've learned that there is nothing perfect in this imperfect world except your words, for they bring such fantastic freedom into my life. I love the word of God. Oh, how I love and treasure the revelation of your word. Throughout the day, I fill my heart with its light. By considering your commands, I have an edge over my enemies, for I take seriously everything you say. You have given me more understanding than those who teach me, for I have absorbed your eye-opening revelation. You have graced me with more insight than the old sages, because I have not failed to walk in the light of your ways. I refuse to bend my morals when temptation was before me, so that I could become ob obedient to your word. I refuse to turn away from difficult truths for you yourself have taught me to love your words how sweet are your living promises to me sweeter than honey is your revelation light for your truth is a source of my understanding not the falsehoods of those who don't know you which i despise truth's shining light true shining light guides me in my choices and decisions the revelation of your word makes my pathway clear to live my life by your righteous rules has been my holy and lifelong commitment. I'm bruised and broken, overwhelmed by it all. Breathe life into me again by your living word. Lord, receive my grateful thanks and teach me more of how to please you, even though my life hangs in the balance. I'll keep following what you've taught me, no matter what. The ungodly have done their best to throw me off track, but I'll not deviate from what you've told me to do. Everything you speak to me is like joyous treasure, filling my life with gladness. I've determined in my heart to obey whatever you say, fully and forever. Trust and obey. I despise those who can't keep commitments. For I passionately love your revelation light. You're my place of quiet retreat, and, you, and your wraparound presence becomes my shield as I wrap myself in your word. Go away, leave me, all you workers of wickedness, for you can't stop me from following every command of my God. Lord, strengthen my inner being by the promises of your word, so that I may live faithful and unashamed for you lift me up and i will be safe empower me to live every moment in the light of your ways lord you reject those who reject your your laws for they fool no one but themselves the wicked are thrown away discarded and valueless that's why i will keep loving all of your laws my body trembles in holy awe of you leaving me speechless for i'm frightened of your righteous judgments i will follow your ways don't leave me to the mercies of those who hate me, for I live to do what is just and fair. Let me hear your promise of blessing over my life, breaking me free from the proud oppressors. 
As a lovesick lover, I yearn for more of your salvation and for your virtuous promises. Let me feel your tender love, for I am yours. Give me more understanding of your wonderful ways. I need more revelation from your word to know more about you, for I am in love with you. Lord, the time has come for you to break through, for evil men keep breaking your laws. Surely your message of truth means more to me than a vault filled with the purest gold. Every word you speak, every truth revealed is always right and beautiful to me, for I hate what is phony or false. I long to obey you. Your marvelous words are living miracles. No wonder I long to obey everything you say. Break open your word within me until revelation light shines out. Those with open hearts are given insight into your plans. I open my mouth and inhale the word of God because I crave the revelation of your commands. Turn your heart to me, Lord, and show me your grace like you do every one of your godly lovers. Prepare me for a path filled with your promises and don't allow me and don't allow even one sin to have domination over me. Rescue me from the oppression of ungodly men so that I can keep all your precepts. Let your shining face shine brightly on me, your loving servant. Instruct me on in what is right in your eyes. When I witness the rebellious breaking your laws, it makes me weep uncontrollably. His word is true. Lord, your judgments reveal your righteousness and your verdicts are always fair. The motive behind your every word is pure. And your teachings are remarkably faithful and true. I've been consumed with a furious passion to do what's right, all because of the way my enemies disrespect your laws. All your promises glow with fire. That's why I'm a lover of your word. Even though I'm considered insignificant and despised by the world, I'll never abandon your ways. Your righteousness has no end. It is everlasting, and your rules are perfectly fair. Even though my troubles overwhelm me with anguish, I still delight and cherish Every message you speak to me, give me more revel revelation so that I can live for you, for nothing is more pure and eternal than your truth. Save me, God. Answer my passionate prayer, O Lord, and I'll obey everything you say. Save me, God, and I'll follow your every instruction. Before the day dawns, I'll be crying out for help and wrapping your words into my life. I lie awake every night pondering your promises to me. Lord, listen to my heart's cry, for I know... Your love is real for me. Breathe life into me again by the revelation of your justice. Here they come. These lawless rebels are coming near, but they are all so far away from your laws. God, you are near me, always so close to me. Every one of your commands reveals truth. I've known all along how true and unchanging is every word you speak, established forever. Breathe life into me again. Look upon all my misery and come be my hero to rescue me. For I will never forget what you revealed to me. Take my side and defend me in these sufferings. Redeem me and revive me, just like you promised you would. The wicked are so far from salvation, so they could not care less about your message of truth. Your tender mercies are what I need, O oh God. Give me back my life again. Through the revelation of your judgments, I have so many enemies who persecute me, yet I won't swerve from following your ways. I grieve when I see how the faithless ones live, for they just walk away from your promises. Lord, see how much I truly love your instructions. So in your tender kindness, breathe life into me again. The sum total of all your words adds up to absolute truth, and every one of your righteous decrees is everlasting. Devoted to God's word, the powerful elite have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart trembles in awe because of your miracle words your promises are the source of my bubble and joy. The revelation of your words thrill, thrills me like one who has discovered hidden treasure. I despise every lie and hate every falsehood, for I am passionate about keeping your precepts. I stop to praise you seven times a day, all because your ways are perfect. There is such a great peace and well-being that comes to the lovers of your word, and you will never be offended, and they, and they will never be offended. Lord, I'm longing for more of your salvation. For I want to do what pleases you. My love for your ways is indescribable. In my innermost being, I want to follow them perfectly. I will keep your instruction and follow your counsel. All my ways are an open book before you. I want to follow you. It's the next segment and the final one for Psalm 119. Lord, listen to my prayer. It's like a sacrifice I bring to you. I must have more revelation of your word. Take my words to heart when I ask you, Lord, rescue me 
just like you promised. I offer you my joyous praise for all that you've taught me. Your wonderful words will become my song of worship, for everything you've commanded is perfect and true. Place your hands of strength and favor upon me, for I've made my choice to follow your ways. I wait for your deliverance, O Lord, for your words thrill me like nothing else. Invigorate my life so that I can praise you even more, and may your truth be my strength. I'll never forget what you've taught me, Lord, for when I wander off and lose my way, come after me, for I am your beloved. Psalm 120, God helped me, a song of this of the stairway. That's what this is entitled. I was desperate for you to help me in my struggles, and you did. So come and deliver me now from this treachery and false accusation. Oh, lying deceivers, don't you know what is your fate? You will be pierced through with condemnation and consumed with burning coals of fire. Why am I doomed to live as an alien scattered among these cruel savages? Am I destined to dwell in the dark and tents of desert nomads? For too long, I've had to live among those who hate peace. I speak words of peace, while they speak words of war, but they refuse to listen. So Psalms 120 to 134 all begin with the words, a song to take you higher, or a song of ascent, or a song of the stair, or, or they, they call it here in the Passion Translation, a song of the stairway. It is likely these 15 songs were sung on the 15 steps that would take the worshiper into the temple. On each step, they would stop to worship and sing the corresponding psalm as they went up higher into the worship of God. Others believe they were songs sung as David brought up the Ark of Glory uh, to Jerusalem, the Ark of the Covenant, uh, and they also uh, they are also known as songs of degrees or songs of ascent. One Hebrew manuscript titles them songs of the homeward marches. So um, that's that's a little bit about what we're reading right now. Uh, the songs, what they call the songs of the stairway we know as Song of Ascent. Now, um, Psalm 121, God protect us. I look up to the mountains and hills longing for God's help, but then I realize that our true help and protection come only from the Lord, our Creator who made the heavens and the earth. He will guard and guide me, never letting me stumble or fall. God is my keeper. He will never forget nor ignore me. He will never slumber nor sleep. He is the guardian God for his people Israel. Jehovah himself will watch over you. He's He's always at your side to shelter you safely in his presence. He's protecting you from all danger both day and night. He will keep you from every form of evil or calamity as he continually watches over you. You will be guarded by God himself. You will be safe when you leave your home and safely you will return. He will protect you now and he'll protect you forevermore. Psalm 122, Jerusalem, a song, a stairway by King David. I was overjoyed when they said, let's go up to the house of the Lord. And now at last we stand here inside the very gates of Jerusalem. Oh, Jerusalem, you were built as a city of praise where God and man mingle together. This is where all the people of Israel are required to come and worship Jehovah God. This is where the thrones of kings have been established to rule in righteousness. Even King David ruled from here. Pray and seek for Jerusalem's peace, for all who love her will prosper. O Jerusalem, may there be peace for those who dwell inside your walls and prosperity in ev in your every palace. I intercede for the sake of my family and friends who dwell there, that they may all live in peace. For the sake of your house, our God, I will seek the welfare and prosperity of Jerusalem. I like how that reads. That's that's kind of that that kind of brings it into a more personal. But by by saying I am interceding, like we are to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, um, absolutely. And um, this kind of reads really nicely. So that's the Passion Translation, um, the prayer for Jerusalem, Psalm one twenty three, a prayer for mercy, a song of the stairway. O God enthroned in heaven, I worship and adore you. The way I love you is like the way a servant wants to please his master, the way a maid waits for the orders of her mistress. We look to you, our God, with passionate longing to please you and discover more of your mercy and grace. For we've had more than our fill 
of this scoffing and scorn, this mistreatment by the wealthy elite. Show us mercy. Show us your mercy. Lord, show us your grace. Now that's one for today. <laughs> Definitely. Psalm 124, Victory, a song of the stairway by King David. What if God had not been on our side? Let all Israel admit this. What if God had been had not been there for us? Our enemies and their violent anger would have swallowed us up alive. The nations with their flood of rage would have swept us away and we would have drowned, perished beneath their torrent of terror. We can praise God over and over that he never left us. God wouldn't, wouldn't allow the terror of our enemies to defeat us. We are free from the hunter's trap. Their snare is broken and we have escaped. For the same God who made everything, our creator and our mighty maker, he himself is our helper and defender. So this is a song we can certainly pray over uh, Israel. Don't forget to pray over Israel. I just want to mention that because things, uh, you know, maybe the news has uh, deterred away from what is really going on, but, but things are still going on and they need our prayers. They need us to stand in the gap and all believers of Yeshua should be standing in the gap with our brothers and sisters in Israel. We are all part of one family and we need to stick together. Amen. Amen. The, the, the final Psalm we're going to read today is Psalm 125, God's surrounding presence, a song of the stairway. Those who trust in the Lord are, are as unshakable, as unmovable as, as mighty Mount Zion, just as the mountains surround Jerusalem. So the Lord's wraparound presence surrounds his people, protecting them now and forever. The wicked will not always rule over the godly, provoking them to do what is evil. God, let your goodness be given away to your good people, to all your godly lovers. But those who turn away from truth, you will turn them away from you to follow their crooked ways. You will give them just what they deserve. May Israel experience peace and prosperity. So that is our Psalms that we're reading for this week. Psalm 101 to 125. Next week, we're going to finish the book of Psalms, Psalm 126 to 150. And that's going to be a lot of Psalms to read, but um, uh, we will be completing it. And then we're going to go into um, the book of Proverbs. And each, as I mentioned before, each uh, book has its own introduction in the Passion Translation. So we will read that first, and then we will, we will get into the Proverbs. With that, we're going to close this segment out with prayer, and then we're going to go into an altar call and then close out this Bible study for this week. Father God, we want to thank you for this time together to, to read the Psalms of this week. And yes, you are a mighty, awesome, and powerful God, and, and we so, as your beloved children, want to be pleasing to you. We want to follow your ways. We want to we want to be able to come to the throne room to you. We want to be in your presence. We want to 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 be able to stand before you. And we know that sin cannot stand before a holy God. So we want we want to always have our hearts right with you. And we want to repent of any sin that that comes uh, that that we have done ever. Uh, and make sure that we are right before you so we can come and be in your presence because it is such a wonderful thing to be in your presence. We just love you, Father God. We worship you. We adore you. And you are the most important person in our lives, the most important being in our lives. You are our creator. You're our Abba. You're our Father. We look to you for all things. Everything else is just gravy, but we need you, Father God. We need you to also deal with our world today. We, Israel needs you. The United States needs you. Every nation in this, on this planet needs you. As we see wickedness rising in our world, we need your glory to overcome. Your light to shine in, in, in all the darkness that is rising. And help us, your children, to shine 
our light that, that is within us, that is you, that the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us, help us, guide us, help us to be those beacons of light that we need to be, to be your hands and feet on this planet, to be good ambassadors of your kingdom, for we are your children. And we help us to emulate you, Father. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're about to do. And we long, we so long for your glory to fill this earth. We so long to see all the evil squelch in, in, in our world and that only goodness shines. And we know that that is going to take you, Yeshua, coming. And we so long for you. We say, Bo, Yeshua, Bo, come, come. We want you to come. But we also know we have to stand in the gap. In, in the meantime, until you do arrive, doing the great commission that we're called to do as believers so that many more can come to the knowledge of you and have the ability to be born again and saved as well. Help us to be good ambassadors of that word, of, the, of your gospel. We thank you. We give you all of our praise. All glory and honor belong solely to you and you alone. We pray this prayer in Yeshua's mightiest, he's mightiest name forever. He is our King of Kings. He is our Lord of Lords. And he is the most precious, precious one. He gave his life for us. May his name be exalted and glorified forever. And we pray this prayer in the name of Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Amen and Amen. Speaking of Yeshua, if you have never given your life to the Lord Yeshua, this is a, an opportunity to give your life to the Lord to get saved, be born again into the family of God and have that blessed assurance of eternal life. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord Jesus Christ. His Hebrew name is Yeshua. You hear me referring to him as Yeshua. That's because that is his Hebrew name and it means salvation. Salvation is deliverance from sin and their consequences. And yes, sin cannot stand before a holy God. If you are full of sin and you're not you haven't repented of that sin and you haven't been born again and saved, you can't stand before God. And the world will tell you there's many paths to go to get in front of God, to get to go to heaven, and that's a lie. We need to step out of the world. The Lord the, the world is so full of lies and lies from the evil one that actually wants to steal, kill, and destroy. God's, you know, the creation of humanity. He hates human beings. Unfortunately, there's people that serves, serves this evil one, the Hasatan, but he, his day is coming. He has been defeated by Jesus. The death on the cross defeated the evil one because what happened there is we go back to where, when the original sin was committed in the Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve probably were in their glorified bodies, which which we're 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 waiting to return to, uh, but they had everything they could possibly want. Uh, they were told to obey the, the Lord to not to not eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and that's when the serpent slinked in. Um, to give a little backstory about that serpent, um, he had once been a very powerful angel. Given a lot of responsibility in heaven. His name at that time was Lucifer. Well, he was made so beautiful, uh, also had, had a beautiful sound, beautiful voice, uh, was thought to have been the praise and worship leader in heaven, uh, also uh, guarded the throne room of God. He decided who came before the throne room, room of God. He also was in charge of, you know, of his group of angels. Well, 
he got into his head and basically got full of pride. Yes, he was beautiful. He got very conceited and and uh, elevated himself and decided he was going to overthrow God, his creator. God created him, too. God created everything, but he thought he could overthrow God. And he could actually convince one third of the angels in heaven to rebel against God. Well, by doing that, he was thrust out of heaven to earth and he was stripped of his name, Lucifer. He really doesn't have a name anymore. He is, you know, everything nasty and ugly and uh, called Hasatan, Satan. Uh, that's like a description. Um, the serpent, the dragon, the evil one. He no longer has that beauty. I mean, he can disguise himself and 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 appeared. You know, he's not going to be the 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 red the red devil figure with horns on the table that that people uh, people seem to to think that he is. He's very deceptive, but he's been defeated by Jesus, and we're going to get to that in just a second. We don't know how long that a third of the angels that that disobeyed God. They were all thrown out of heaven. Um, we don't know how long they were they were on the earth here um, before God actually created mankind. But now they're stewing. They hate God. And imagine, you know, here God creates these images, these, these, these beings made in his image, places them in the garden. And there they are, you know, like reminders of, of what you know, of God and who they hate. You know, now now here's little mini me's of, of God, you know, right there with them. So we don't know how long they kind of, you know, the serpent, um, the evil one stewed there before he went to go trip up Adam and Eve. Um, Adam and Eve have, had a perfect relationship with God. He provided everything for them. They didn't need anything. They this they had, they lived in this lush garden that was you know everything was provided for them food wise, um, and so they they really had a luxurious life um, that they didn't have to to work hard for at all, and they had the communion of you know with God every day, the Creator of all things. I mean, how good how good was that? Well, they blew it. The serpent came. Um, tempted Eve to look at the tree. And then when she looked at the tree, she decided, I guess in her mind, that um, by listening to the serpent twisting the word of God, he took a little truth and then twisted it. And it made her think that God was keeping something from them. Now, Adam knew the truth firsthand from God. God told him that commandment to not touch, you know, to not partake of that tree. Um, but Eve was well aware of that. But Adam where was Adam when this was all going on? Adam was right there. He could have said no and put a stop to it. No, Eve, I heard God myself with my own ears um, firsthand tell me, no, don't do this. So we're not going to do this. We're not going to disobey God, who is a friend to us. You know, how, how could we do this to him? And he's, you know, it, you know, be, betray him, actually. Um, and by thinking that he was um, keeping something from them, he really wasn't keeping anything from them. They had everything they needed. And when God told them that they would surely die, yes, they died spiritually. They lost their glorified bodies and were left with this fleshly body that we're all stuck with now since that. So, um, yeah. So mankind could never redeem himself. There's not enough good works that you could ever do to redeem yourself after all of that. Okay, that was the original sin that cursed everybody uh, that came afterwards. So, you know, when when uh, God tried to reestablish the relationship with, with the children of Israel after the Exodus um, at Mount Sinai, and they forfeited uh, because they were really fearful of the the shaking and quaking of the mountain and the smoke and the trumpet sounds. And, and they really thought they were going to die if they heard any more, which was you know heartbreaking for God because he really wanted to reestablish the relationship with, with his people right then and there. But they, they, you know, Moses already had a relationship with the Lord and they said, 
you know, you go, you go listen to him basically. And, and, and you have, you talk to him and we'll do whatever he tells us. Well, that's how we got the Torah. That's, that's how we got the Torah. And, um, so with that also came, came up commandments and, and things began to be established. And yes, the sins of the people had to be addressed. And so there was an animal sacrificial system put in place to cover the sins of the people. Uh, it could never take it completely away. But those animals had to be perfect. They could not, they could not be blemished. They could not be lame. They had to be the finest choice to, in order to cover the sins of the people. But there was sacrifice after sacrifice, year after year after year. Um, Yeshua came to be the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. He was born of a virgin and, and the Spirit of God breathed into his mother. Um, so he was not, he did not come through the line of Adam and he came perfect, sin-free, blemish-free. And so he knew that he came to actually, uh, the first time to take away our sins through his own death. So he was the sacrificial lamb and he laid down his own life. And he also was beaten brutally by Roman soldiers before he went to the cross and we can also say by his wounds, we are healed. He took our illnesses and afflictions as well. Jesus himself said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one will come to the Father but by me. So do not listen to the world and their lies. There is nothing in the world that can redeem anyone from anything. Jesus, Yeshua, is the only way. And he paid everyone's sin debt in full. And no, you haven't fallen so far that you can't be redeemed. Sin is sin, no matter how great the sin and how small the sin is, it's all the same to a holy God. So all you need to do is, is repent, call on the name of Jesus, and you will be saved. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, because we were born into it. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through him the world might be saved. Now, our part in this is very simple. You know, the devil would like to <laughs> make it all you know, confusing and chaotic and, you know, with all kinds of rationalizations. But it's very simple. All we need to do is come to the Lord to confess our sins and ask for forgiveness, and he will forgive you. He's already died for your sins. And accept him as your Lord and Savior. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's that simple. Just calling on the on the name of the Lord. You heard in one of the Psalms, Lord, save us. And he said, and he did. Yes, that is what he wants to do. He loves you so much. If you had been the only one on the planet, he would have still died for you. So every soul is important to the Lord. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to be born again into the family of God, you want to be saved, you want that blessed assurance of eternal life, you can say the simple prayer with me right now. Dear God, I come to you today to confess that I'm a sinner and I need a Savior. And I understand the only Savior is the only Messiah that was, is, and is to come. And that is Jesus. His Hebrew name is Yeshua. And he died on a cross. He was buried. He was resurrected. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now. And I know that he is coming again, to rule and reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for, for giving your life for me, for paying my sin debt in full, and I'm asking you to please forgive me of any sin that I've ever committed, known or unknown, and I'm repenting today and wanting to live a better life. I give, I, I accept the gift of salvation and of eternal life. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside me, to guide me in all of your ways for the rest of my life. And right here, right now, I declare you, Jesus, Yeshua, my Lord, and my Savior, from now until forever. 
I believe through you and you alone, Jesus, that I'm saved, healed, born again, set free, and delivered from sin and the consequences of sin. And I am now healthy of mind, body, and soul. I pray this prayer in the mightiest name of all, the most precious name of all of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. If you've said that prayer with me, welcome to the family of God. I am going to encourage you to get into a Bible-based church or a Messianic congregation, one that teaches directly from the Bible and not all kinds of other um, ideas and of, of, of the world and other religions and other books and self-help books and all this and that. Now we need to stick to the word of God. And what does God say about all of these, these things in our world? Because the Bible is relevant today. It really is. When we look at, at the condition of our world, we can certainly relate to the Bible. And actually, the Bible is a living Bible. It is our instructional manual from God. And, and we actually draw nearer to God the more we read the Bible because we see the heart of our Father. And yes, if you're born again and saved, if you said this prayer, you are now a child of the Most High God, the God, the creator of all things. What a blessing that is. What a wonderful thing that is. And you can call on him anytime. He's your Abba. He's your father. And he hears you. He's not going to abandon you. He doesn't slumber or sleep. He will hear your cries. So develop that relationship with you, with him. He, he wants that. Don't miss that opportunity now. Don't get all caught up in religion. There's a lot of modern day Pharisees that are out there now that are so stuck in religion. And it's where's the relationship with the Lord. That's really what he wants. He wants you to be humble, childlike. Jesus said you must be like a little child to enter heaven. So you are his child. This is why um, we're all in the same level playing field we need a savior to be saved and we're all children of god part of a big family both jew and gentile alike we are we are one in one family there's there's not the god of the jews there's not a god of the gentiles no yeshua died for everyone and he broke down that middle barrier so we could be all part of one big family of believers the Gentiles, of course, get grafted in, but that's okay. They're still part of our family. So, um, again, we st we need to start acting as such and and being a uni unified body of Messiah. Yeshua is is our head, and he is the only one worthy to be that leader because he died for each and every one of us. And we can be eternally, we need to be eternally grateful for that because none of us would ever have made it to be able to even look forward to eternity, eternal, eternity in heaven. Get tongue tied here. Um, none of us would ever have that ability to go to heaven if he hadn't done what he did, if he had not reversed the curse that was upon mankind. So there's no reason to boast, there's no reason to get all like, Pharisee like, uh, no, we're all the same. We all needed a savior. And we're all children of God, looking to our God for everything that we need. Share the little things with him. He wants relationship with you. I, I can't imagine, you know, before Adam and Eve failed, how wonderful that must have been for them to talk to God every day. It's, you know, you often wonder, what their conversations were like. Well, you can have that with him. He loves you. You're his child. He has put his name upon you, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. You are his child and no one, no one can take you from him. Amen. Amen. We're going to close uh, with the Aaronic blessing, also known as the priestly blessing. And that is found in Numbers chapter 6, verses 22 to 27. The Lord spoke to Moses, telling Moses to speak to Aaron and his sons. Now, Aaron was the high priest at this time, uh, and his sons were also priests. 
and they ministered over the congregation, over the children of Israel. What the Lord wanted to do is, is put his name on his children, on the children of, of Israel, because he chose Israel as his and had an unbreakable and continues to have an unbreakable covenant with the house of Israel. So he wanted to put his name on them and give them his blessing, the blessing that goes on today as well. Now, if you're born again and saved, God has already put his name on you, sealed you with his Holy Spirit. This blessing is also for you. And these were specific words that were given. And I'm going to say those words in Hebrew first and then in English. In Hebrew, it goes like this. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Shavua Tov. Have a, have a good week, everyone. And um, again, we have our main Bible study, and that's the New American Standard Bible. Um, we have uh, also have the Tanakh uh, that is out there as an additional Bible study and, and this Bible study going on. So uh, check them all out. Um, if you are also involved in the class hearing from God. We're meeting 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday evening. Also, if you're not uh, and you have prayer requests, please don't hesitate to, to leave a message to me if you would like us to pray for you. Uh, we do corporate prayer on Tuesday night, no matter what we're doing. Uh, even if it's just fellowshipping, we take time out to pray for the needs of the people. For, for We pray for Israel. We pray for our, our nation here. Um, and we would be very honored uh, to pray for you. Praying for someone is an honor. Uh, to, and we've got some really good intercessory prayer warriors with us on a Tuesday night. So um, don't hesitate. If you would like prayer, we would be glad to pray for you. God bless each and every one of you. And have a good rest of your week.